I'm going to present to you Kronos Timing Definition Language, or, in short, TDL. TDL revolutionizes the way embedded software is developed. Today, you typically define the platform first, and the software, including its timing behavior, is tightly cuddled with the platform. Even slight changes of the platform might lead to disasters, errors in the behavior. However, this does not occur with the timing definition language. So one main advantage of TDL is its correctness. Kernel guarantees time and value determinism of the system you developed with TDL. Another huge advantage is the portability of TDL components. So once you've developed the components with TDL, you can deploy it on any platform. This might be a distributed platform, for example a flex ray cluster with ECU nodes, or a single node, or a multi-core system. So let's summarize the TDL advantages. You get better quality because Krona guarantees correct timing, and you have less development costs because developers can ignore platform details. So how does TDL work? The core abstraction of TDL is what we call the logical execution time abstraction. This means that you specify the timing independent of the platform, as depicted in the upper half of the picture. The release point in time is the instant where the input values of a task read and the terminate instant is the point in time where the results of the task invocation are made public to others. It doesn't matter how long the calculation really takes. So let's take a look at an example. The module sender has one sensor, S1, one actuator, A1, and one task called INC. In the textual version of TDL, you simply write this down as a declaration in the beginning of the module declaration. Then you specify the timing behavior by defining a mode period for each mode. In this example, the start mode is called main and has a period of 5 milliseconds. Because the frequency of the task invocation inc is defined as 1, the let of inc is 5 milliseconds in this mode. Another module receiver imports the module sender and thus it can access the output port of task inc. This picture illustrates the timing behavior of two tasks task inc in module sender, and task client task in module receiver. Inc has a let of 5 milliseconds, and client task a let of 10 milliseconds. Every 10 milliseconds, the client task gets the output of inc as input. So let's finalize the overview of the timing definition language by taking a look at Krona's toolchain. In the simplest case, we use the TDL compiler and feed in the textual description of the timing behavior, as we've just seen on the previous slides. Then the compiler generates the intermediate E code, and the TDL machine is the runtime system, which is deployed on a specific platform, and executes both the timing and the functionality on a particular platform. Platform-specific plugins can generate specific files for a platform. For example, if you use OSEC as the operating system, you need to have an OIL file generated, which is done by the platform-specific plugin for OSEC. The ASD, the shortcut for abstraction syntax tree, is the interface for the compiler to write such plugins. Krona's Visual Creator is covering the upper half of the toolchain. Krona's Visual Creator is seamlessly integrated in MATLAB Simulink, so you can experiment with the behavior of the overall system in MATLAB Simulink. And Krona guarantees that the timing behavior you have specified in MATLAB Simulink is the same on the specific platform. Krona's Visual Distributor then does the mapping to a specific platform. Thank you for your interest in Kronos Timing Definition Language. As a next step, you might be interested in experimenting with the Timing Definition Language. For that purpose, I recommend you download Kronos Visual Creator Tool from our website. Thank you for your attention.